Hello everyone, this is Charm Pennewart from Media Stream, and I'm happy to be here to be hosting ADHD Hemispheric Approach with Dr. Kelly Miller. He'll be joining us really soon. And today, of course, we'll be covering everything about ADHD, the right brain, left brain, and all the advanced technologies that are available at Dr. Kelly Miller's clinic, Saving Your Brain. He has three centers, two in Florida and one in Kansas City, Missouri. So we're gonna have him come on now and uh, welcome Dr. Kelly Miller. How are you? Good, hey Charlie, good to see you again. Nice to see you. We're very excited, as always, to learn more about our brain. And of course, ADHD is a hot topic, right? Stress and anxiety. So I'm going to, you know, get started and kind of share our screen. So we have okay. a nice deck going on here. And, um, you know, you you are the brain expert. You know, you're the author of Saving Your Brain book, plus seven other health books, correct? On Amazon? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I mean, it's so exciting and, you, you know, a lot of information within these books and very helpful. We've been covering it over the past few months, you know, all the different topics from dementia, Alzheimer's. But today we're going to be talking about ADHD. Um, you know, Dr. Kelly Miller, you are the founder of Saving Your Brain Training Centers, uh, both in Naples and also uh, Temple Terrace, Florida, as well as the Kansas City, Missouri. Now that's expanding. Are you, is that right? You have more services in that area? Yes, um, we had uh, initially started in Kansas City and I uh, was going there a couple of days a month and we were seeing patients on an intensive basis. We would see them for three to four and a half hours and now but we have uh, put more equipment there and we have uh, staff trained now so we can see patients on a weekly basis. That's so awesome. Yeah. And and so you have 40 years of clinical experience. Um, that's a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of patience. And you're a speaker. Um, you are a brain expert. And, and tell me about the Malilo um, method, because you're, you, you're certified in that. Yes. So um, when I wrote Saving the Brain, it was about a, as a global approach to brain health and, um, you know, what we can do and uh, generally nutrition wise and habit wise and, and uh things to help the brain. But what we've done, uh, I, when I did the fellowship with uh, Dr. Malilo, he ha uh, really realized that all these problems or uh, mental illnesses or, or uh, diagnosis of uh, dementia, Parkinson's, anxiousness, depression, insomnia, PTSD, uh, stroke, ADHD, autism, the list goes on and on, are all have some hemispheric imbalance associated, mm -hmm. either a weakness of the left or right hemisphere. And uh, when our brain, uh, even though the left and right hemispheres look very similar, they actually do a lot, a lot of different things. And uh, so if we get too far out of balance in the left or right, I, I say we get quirky, you know, we get odd. We, our behavior is, is a little outside the normal. And some people, can, uh, you know, there's a lot of quirky people that uh, are successful and do well, but most struggle. And uh, so there's nothing wrong with having a little quirkiness, but when it, it creates so much problem that you're having trouble uh, in your relationships with your family, loved ones and work and school and things like that, then we need to get a little more balance in there. Right. Wow. Well, um, we're very excited to get started right now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hand the, you know, the mic to you. So uh, here you go. Tell right. We talk about uh, ADHD. It stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. And uh, it's now in one in nine children. And this is four to one boys. And uh, it's characterized by hyperactive impulsivity and inattentive. Easy for me to say inattentiveness. Uh, and, you know, all kids kind of go through this at some stage. I mean, I was really concerned about my youngest daughter's youngest son because he was just a wild man. But really now he's kind of come with two and a half now and he, he really came out of this. I really thought he was uh, going to have some problems. So it's, it's temporarily kids will act wild and crazy. But if it persists, and uh, for more than six months. And then it's really causing interference, not only at home, 
but when they go to work or if they go to the babysitter or if they're school, whatever, and you know, you're getting uh, these negative reports back, then that that's a problem then. And uh, this not only affects children, but it also affects, you know, adults as well. You know, an ADHD child becomes an ADHD adult. Right. And as we said, many of these kids, uh, many children will display these things. Um, but again, it's a, if the behavior is severe, consistent, lasting more than six months, uh, then we need to check into it. Do you have a test um, at Saving Your Brain that, you know, they go through and say, do you have this behavior and that behavior? Is, is that one of your protocols? Well, one of, yeah, one of, and the, um, when we do a consultation, we're looking at, okay, what do we, what are, what's going on that we're concerned about? And usually it's an attention focus problem and can be an initiative problem also. And, but also just some, um, you know, poor behavior as well. Uh, but we look at that, but when we do the testing, as we get into the uh, presentation here, we're going to talk about the different parts of the brain that control this. And so we do specific testing to see how these areas are working. Yeah. And, and so we find the weaknesses, then we can shore them up. Well, excited to learn more. Now, there's basically three different types of uh, ADHD. The first is the classic ADD. And this is just where there is easily distracted by sights and sound. Don't pay attention to detail. Uh, doesn't seem to listen to when spoken to, makes careless mistakes, doesn't follow through on instructions. And the other thing is they avoid or dislike activities that require their attention and focus. And a lot of these children will also, they'll just avoid things, new things that they're uncertain about because they don't want, you know, they don't want to look bad or they don't want to, you know, not do well in it. And the, the second type, is uh, the hyperactive impulsivity. And this is the kid that's really squirming around and, you know, it's hard to sit still and they're always running around and uh, jumping and climbing on things. And they're always interrupting people and blurting things out. Uh, they talk in excessively and they interrupt other people. Mm. And then the, uh, the next type is really the most common. It's a combined. So they have a little of this and a little of that from the first two, but the, uh, the thing I want to stress is that uh, I, I, and a lot of people who don't have an ADHD child don't realize that these children suffer from anxiety, depression, and uh, many of them have serious sleeping problems. You know, they're not sleeping well. And we're going to get into that when we talk about primitive reflexes, why that, why that effect is, is on their nervous system. And, and a lot of them have conduct disorders and most of these behaviors, once we balance the brain and we get rid of the primitive reflexes, these go away. But sometimes uh, there's some coaching, extra coaching needs to be on behavior because families have kind of learned, you know, how to push each other's buttons and they need to, you know, kind of relearn a couple of things. So uh, training for mom, dad and children. Right. Um, so, again, for the diagnosis, it needs to be made. It has to persist for six months, kind of beaten at a Head. And then it's uh, the symptoms are listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of the American Psychiatric Association. So this is I just want to touch on medication. You know, 30 uh, percent of ADHD children, adults, medication does absolutely nothing for them. And of that 70 percent, there's a lot of side effects. You know, they may have a positive one or two things are in there, but you know, some of the side effects are just as bad. And many uh, parents and children, you know, quit taking medication. And um, the other thing that is really common is that the American uh, Heart Association says, you know, you should actually have an EKG before you start the stimulant medication. And, and that's rarely done. So uh, just heads up for parents to, to uh get that checked out if they're going to consider medication, but we're going to, we're going to tell you how we can handle that without medication. You know, a lot of people think that um, it's just a chemical imbalance, but really the studies we've done with functional MRIs and things have actually show that there's actually some anatomical difference. And particularly in the right brain that you may have a smaller pathway 
between uh, different connecting parts of the brain. And it's usually in the, uh, involving the brain stem and the cerebellum, the basal ganglion, and the frontal cortex. And we're going to talk a little bit about, I know those are big words, different things, people don't really get it, but we're going to show you a picture and, and make it simple for you uh, where this breakdown uh, occurs. So one of the things we do is a brain mapping, and I'm, and I'm just going to show you a couple of brain maps that are really are, are very common in the ADHD or ADD person. And this is something we have five different brain waves. One's called Delta, which is the slowest brain wave. And so um, when we have high Delta, that's like you're, you're trying to drive your car with the parking brake on. OK, so this is really slowing uh, these people's brain down. And many times this high delta indicates environmental stressors, things like heavy metal, toxicity, herbicides, insecticides, pesticides, uh, food, serious food allergies, and uh, a mold infection. So when we see this, we usually investigate some environmental factors and we usually find multiple things. And the next slide uh, we're going to talk about is on... Uh, very common is low beta and low beta beta waves are produced by dopamine. Mm -hmm. And so this is something that's very common in uh, the ADHD, ADD uh, child or adult is that they have low dopamine and uh, dopamine is necessary for sustained focus and attention and also initiative. You know, lots of times, um, when we have a significant ADHD child, they they aren't thriving. You know, they're having trouble in school. Many times they drop out of school or they're having problems uh, getting a job or maintaining a job, just having the initiative to go out and, and do these things and sustain it. So, mm -hmm. you know, we see a lot of young men still living at home in their 20s that we that we help. And so. This is getting back what we were talking about, Dr. Malilo, and, and really uh, for anybody out there, you should read his book called Disconnected Kids and Reconnected Kids. And Dr. Malilo actually had a son that was challenged in his ways, and he was already at a background in neurology. So he was really driven, you know, to help his own son. And uh, one of the uh, finishing up his PhD right now, um, doctor of chiropractic, uh, master's degree, and, and you know, is a lifelong learner. But one of the things that we find out is in the right side of the brain is where 80% of our focus attention uh, occurs. And we're seeing uh, that uh, research from Harvard and other places are, are really substantiating this hemispheric weakness and imbalance uh, on the right side. And our left side is like our intellectual and our right side is more of our emotional IQ, you know, cue. And so it's our social cues, eye contact, uh, things like that. And uh, this is also when we talk, uh, we're going to look in further. This is uh, the left brain is like, let's go for it. I can do it. Anything right now. Let's go for it. And the right side is, well, you know, maybe we should be a little cautious about this. So. And maybe we should think about that before we do that. Or maybe we should think before we say that. So mm. these, they don't have that, that buffer on the right side, that filtering thing. And uh, where we're going to talk about this is this area where this arrow in is called the prefrontal cortex. And um, this is a common area of stress or breakdown in lots of different brain conditions that we're going to look at here. And uh, in just a moment, and this is, uh, how we change this area and how we improve this is something through neuroplasticity. And, you know, our brain has the ability to reweight, rewire and regenerate itself. And so we can take a little dirt road and make a six lane highway out of it. Basically, if you have the right equipment and the right, uh, uh, right information to put in the brain our, and our brain is like a sensory sponge. And when we find these weak areas, we, um, put multiple sensory in as we work the systems together through uh, sight, sound, vibration uh, inputs. And that's how we get the changes. If we, uh, so one of the things that's really important uh, on neuroplasticity 
is that we need to do repetition, intensity, and frequency of specific things. And so when we work out someone, so in our brain retraining centers, so we, many of us seem like a bell curve, you know, like, and so when we're physically training, so many of us have been to a trainer or we've done something athletically, we want to go up to that peak and maybe just a little past it. We want to stress ourselves because that's the only way we can get stronger faster. So the brain is the same way. We have to stimulate the brain and make it work and struggle just a little bit to make, to get gross. And, uh, you know, we do different things. We monitor patients with a pulse ox and just the way the, uh, uh, everything is measured on timing and frequency that we do. So we can see when someone's starting to, to break down. So then we, we need to do a little rest or time out, or they may be done with that activity. But the repetition is really important. So that most of the patients come to your centers to, uh, you know, perform the activities, but then you also have home therapy units, which you'll talk to about us later. Right. Absolutely. Then we have them do specific things at home too. Right. So this is just, I want to spend a little time on this uh, because this is really important. If we look at that and um, I don't know, can we make that any bigger? How about that? Yeah, because I, I want to start at the top here and I want to kind of work around because I want people to really understand, you know, what this is, is, is doing. So considering the future and making predictions. OK, so that's de called deductive reasoning. You know, I don't know how many people I know that they have lack deductive reasoning, but this is something that your child may be doing. You know, you think it's logical they can do that, but they're not seeing that. And just focus and attention is on that organizing your thoughts and problem solving. OK, I see this all the time with these young men that come in and, you know, they're like, uh, uh, I need to get an oil change and my tires low. I go, OK, well, see that place across the street. Just go over there and make an appointment and take care of it. I mean, it's. Simple, simple things, uh, you know, planning life skills, uh, they're just lacking that. Uh, forming challenges and planning. Inability to uh, inappropriate behavior and initiating appropriate behavior because they have these filter or buffering problems. So they, they just, lots of times they're not getting how um, rude, obnoxious, or uh, they're being. And... Um, so simultaneously considering multiple uh, sources of information, okay? Lots of times they can just fairly, you know, do one thing at a time. And uh, lots of times you'll have a diagnosis of sensory problems. I mean, so I'm, I'm doing something, but if this noise is over here, I can't, I can't focus and attention. And we should be able to uh, get through that. And again, foreseeing and weighing the possible consequence of behavior, so again, this is something, you know, we have young men and then they become, they hit puberty, then they have testosterone and testosterone just kind of makes, I think it makes uh, them think they're invulnerable. So their decision-making is even worse. Uh, modulation uh, of, of emotional response, you know, uh, very emotional, uh, inappropriately many times or over emotional so again, all these things, if you look at all these, you know, when, if you have three or four of these things, you can see that you have a problem in the prefrontal cortex. And the biggest thing is when they have a problem with prefrontal cortex, you have a problem with compliance. So let's just look, can you get, you know, them to do something consistently? That's a, This is a compliance problem. This part of the brain is not working. We have compliance problems. And again, just looking at that, I don't know if we can make that any bigger, um, but the prefrontal cortex is involved in working memories or I need to get some glasses. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Decision-making, planning, organization, uh, insight and judgment. And it's really top-down control. But I want you to look over on the right. I want you to see all the dis disorders where this is a common problem. Just the aging brain, ADHD, autism, Delirium, schizophrenia, bipolar, 
And we see all these different patients that have had this diagno diagnosis, PTSD, OCD, traumatic brain injury. So very common, very common problem. And we see this, uh, you know, I would say in 80, per, you know, 80, 90 percent of the patients with whatever diagnosis they come in, they have this this problem with the prefrontal cortex. And we have specific things we can do this. So I just want to spend a little time about primitive reflexes. So this is something when I talk to parents, um, uh, you know, probably 50-50 that someone has told them about primitive reflexes, they may have had an occupational therapist work with their child on this. But these primitive reflexes are like when you, you know, put your finger in the baby's hand, they grasp it. And if you tuck their cheek, they'll turn to nurse. And there's about eight of these and they should all integrate usually by 18 months, three years at the latest and they all integrate in the brainstem. And these are uh, uh, important that they integrate because it indicates a developmental step in brain growth. And the brain develops from the bottom up. Well, the bottom is the brainstem, okay? So if we don't have maturation in the brainstem of integration of these primitive reflexes, everything else on, on the brain is on shaky ground and we'll see multiple problems with the vestibular system balance problems so uh, this is really important and each of these primitive reflexes are uh, reflected by certain neural behaviors and uh, when i show them you know the parents i go this is your child has this primitive reflex look at this and they go oh yeah that's him that's him that's him yeah and they recognize this so uh, what we're able to do, there are certain exercises will help integrate these faster, but we also use um, uh, a laser. I guess we uh, I guess we need to add that slide, don't we? A laser slide, maybe. But yeah. we, uh, we use photobiostimulation to uh, activate the underactive areas of the, of the brain. So what uh, photo, uh what it does, it increases the circulation in the underactive area and it activates the ATP in that those cells that makes it more active. So basically when we do the examination, we're able to find the, in, the less active underdeveloped areas and we stimulate that, uh, co-activate that with the laser increasing circulation in the ATP while we're doing specific exercises that uses that part of the brain. I see that on, on some of your pictures uh, yeah. for your uh, center that you have several of these. Uh, right. They're, they're getting sound in to the side. They're getting vibration on this on their side. They're getting uh, they're wearing a certain color eyeglasses to stimulate part of their brain. They're getting uh, essential oils in their nose. They're getting multiple sensory overlay while, while they're getting co-activation with the laser and all the sensory input and doing a specific exercise that uses a specific part of the brain. It works really well. I see that on your website, we actually have quite a few videos for the primitive reflexes that they can watch. And it's also on your YouTube channel, right? The seal exercise. Yeah. So parents, I mean, they're good up if you could, you can start checking your child, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if you do this. And then we also have, um, I think we have what the neural behaviors are. If not, we need to definitely get that up for each one. Right. No, but this is a big deal. And this is something all these cheap children with ADHD, they always have primitive reflexes and, mm -hmm. and the autistic kids as well. But I think it, it's wise to actually get a consultation with you first because, you you know, sometimes you don't know what you're looking for if you're doing the exercise. Oh, sure, sure. I mean, we, we can. So, we, it takes us two minutes to do a primitive reflex. Right. And so... Obviously, awesome. we have a, a higher level expertise than than mom and dad are probably going to have. Of course. All right. So this is we're just going to talk kind of about some of the things that we evaluate our evaluation tools and uh, then how we treat the patient. So, again, uh, core strength is important. What we'll see many times in the ADHD child is they'll have an asymmetry of strength. One side will be much stronger than the other. We'll see eye changes. This is important because different parts of the brain control our eye movements. And one of the things is called a saccade. So a saccade is like going from one target to the, the next. But when we read text, we're actually using saccade. So we, we, we go a few, we're, you know, a few um, letters ahead and we're kind of like constantly scanning like that. So if that 
yeah. part of your brain isn't working, then you're going to have eye tracking problem. You're going to have um, problems with uh, 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 reading comprehension. And what we see is we actually can track this with this right eye. And we'll see that one eye is up here and one eye is over here. Or, and people are missing two or three sentences. And that's we take a test. And that's why they are missing the gist of, of what's going on. And, um, you know, this happens, uh, you know, we see this a lot of adults. We'll see this after a traumatic brain injury. And uh, so there's many different things that will that will create that. And the other thing is these kids have vestibular. Uh, so one of the things I want to care if any parents, if you have a child, keep them on their belly, keep them crawling because we learn we actually have four stages in our vestibular system when we're a baby we're just laying down and and the baby's kind of sticking their head up like this and they're trying to look around and they're starting to develop the center and then they get up and we call it like a lion's pose they're up on their elbows you know and they're kind of looking around and then they get up in in the crawling position and then they again they're looking this is all in here and so when these children don't crawl and it's don't still stand up belly time they wind up when they're standing upright there's they have a problem with their vestibular system and huge areas of our brain are allocated just to keep us upright and when that is not working well then we're robbing energy from upper level executive functions and when we put uh, a laser on these kids head and we try to target okay i want you to hold you know this beam on this little target over here on the wall, they, they look like the bobbleheads, you know, the little things in your car. And <laughs> that's how bad their vestibular system is. And that's why they're also having trouble reading because it, I'm, I'm a little exaggerating, but this is what their head their, is oscillating as they're trying to read. So mm. that's very important in getting that corrected. So let's look at some of the other technologies here um, going forward that we use in the office. So one is called an interactive metronome. And this is a, um, uh, it actually does six different things. I think these slides are reversed. Maybe look at the next slide. Okay. Um, yeah. So right. here's things that the interactive metronome helps with sensory processing. So a lot of these kids have diagnosed with sensory process, working memory, attention and concentration, processing speed, just making your brain work faster, motor planning. So that's like, you know, you're getting this information and how am I going to solve this, this problem? And then the sequencing of things time-wise and spatially and balance and coordination. These are all huge areas. And, and, and uh, many times children have these different diagnoses that are accompanying this. But this uh, interactive metronome works with all this and it gets their timing better. So it gets the sensory information up to the frontal cortex and back and we're getting just a faster exchange. And again, this has got many white papers on it. So I call it white paper. That means like you, a study. They've done studies of this and, uh, and prove the efficacy of it. Okay, so let's look at another thing. This is an another cool uh, thing. The NeuroSage was uh, started by a friend of mine, Kyle Daigle, and has had input with uh, uh, Dr. Malilo on this. And it's color-coded and things for the left and right brain for strengthening, and it has a multi a multiple purposes. But again, what we can do uh, with this through light and sound uh, is we can target different parts of the brain. And we're going to talk about uh, one, of the, one of the areas on this prefrontal cortex, which is really common in the ADHD key, kid, is the right, uh, the right basal ganglion talking to the prefrontal cortex. And again, what we said before is the left side said, go for it. The right side says, maybe we should wait and think about it. So they have none of this. So we do a lot of work specifically targeting that basal, right basal ganglion and the prefrontal cortex so that they get that filter working right and they get that uh, the, the appropriate cautionary information in there wow you are the brain expert <laughs> wow this is exciting um i want to just bring up really quickly a little you know image over here do you see it on the top left um right. that's that unit that you were talking about that laser unit right yes 
Okay. Yeah, there's so, actually getting three different areas of the brain are getting laser there. So wow, is that that's happening at your center now for ADHD and autism and all the different brain, you know, um, symptoms that they have along with that. Yeah, the, um, the, the photobiomodulation is a, it really is a good, great tool. And so that's that unit here, and that's available actually. Um, but after a consultation with you, obviously, to understand where it applies and, and all that uh, for the brain. Yeah, we have many patients who mm -hmm. have really significant issues. Um, you know, I have patients that are uh, in wheelchair, severe stroke, or, mm -hmm. and or brain injuries, uh, nonverbal autistic children, uh, parents who have multiple children who have ADHD. And so lots of times, you know, from a cost effectiveness and to do that, many times uh, we'll recommend that the parents or these patients, you know, get a laser so they can treat it th themselves at home. And then we train them in that. Yeah, this seems like a very small unit and it comes with like a stand and uh, I'm sure there's instructions and you train them to use it, as you just said. How exciting is that to be able to continue that at home as well as, you know, um, yeah, it's center. a great technology. I've been using laser since 1996. Awesome. Uh, I was a field investigator for the Microlight 830. It was the first cold laser. When you say cold, non-surgical laser, uh, that was FDA approved and uh, cleared in 2004 for the treatment of carpal tunnel. And so in the last, you know, 20 years, the technology and lasers has uh, really grown and grown. And, and this is a very compact rechargeable uh, frequency-based uh, laser that has does red and infrared light. And of course, so, you just mentioned it's FDA approved, so it's safe. Yeah, it's, after, um, it's cleared. Uh, the, the, yeah, uh -huh. it's cleared. Um, approved, yeah, and drugs are approved, but devices are cleared. So Yeah, okay, great. You got to make that distinction. Right. Okay. So this is just another person. Uh, and so, you know, the NeuroSage is used for lots of different uh, people that have been diagnosed with different conditions. And uh, these are some of those there. Uh, mm -hmm. We have one one area called tremors that actually helps people like with Parkinson's disease. It actually helps reduce their, uh, seems to help reduce their tremors. So she's standing on a unit there, a platform. She's actually standing on a vibration unit. That's called okay. the biplate. And it has variants. And usually we'll do that with... Uh, 10 to 40 hertz. 10 hertz is more brainstem and cerebellum, and 40 hertz is more frontal cortex. Mm -hmm. And uh, 10 hertz, you really don't notice it, so you can do that. But 40 hertz is, you're you're you're, you're kind of moving a little bit, so it uh, will start someone at tense and will gradually move them up. Uh, a lot of people can, initially couldn't do a 40 hertz, and we'll also isolate that. Um, uh, I have another from South Korea called the Sonics and. We actually have them put one foot on the vibration plate, which is like a sound, actually like a sound plate on the Sonics. Mm -hmm. And the other one is on a, a platform and we'll either do simulate the left side or the right side. Wow. It's so interesting that there's so much technology out there and you've invested a lot into, you know, for your centers. So um, amazing. Now I see an adult on there. Obviously a child can also do the same uh, for NeuroSage, correct? Yeah, we've seen, you know, six years. I've, I've got s from six to 98 right now. Wow. So, okay. Uh, why, why difference there? Well, about neurofeedback. I've yeah, neurofeedback is what you do based on the information. Before we did a brain mapping, we showed the different colors and there. And uh, neurofeedback is been used for years and it's been refined and basically uh after the brain mapping we're targeting what are the weakest areas so it could be the frontal cortex you know here here or here or it might be the occipital area or the temporal area and uh basically you're you're monitoring these brain waves these five different brain waves while someone is watching a movie and because these uh it has a capability of reading the brain waves. When the brain waves are more optimal, the picture gets very brighter. And when they're not very optimal, it gets darker. So they're watching this fluctuation. But after a while, the brain figure goes, 
oh, if I want to see better, I operate this frequency that makes it bright. Mm. So it's actually self-correcting. You know, the brain is amazing. Thing. So your brain is adjusting to it's, what it's seeing. Yeah, it's, it's, amazing. it's trying to correct the, yeah. Wow. And then this is another tool that we use. Uh, this is a home tool. Uh, I mean, we'll do it in the office too, but uh, we recommend most of our patients get this because based off the brain mapping, we can uh, make specific recommendations of specific frequencies on this device. And it has five different technologies. One, it's treating actually auricular acupuncture points with infrared therapy. Our circulation goes through our ear every two minutes. Okay. And we, uh, so it's activating places like Shin Min, which balances our autonomic nervous system. And um, it also has a visor that has a blue light frequency and that frequency is adjustable. So the brain, like I said, is a sensory sponge. So it responds to light, sound and vibrational frequencies. So we can pace the brain by, by the number of impulses going through the, the eyelids and we can actually make it different on one side than the other. So we can actually make one, this one work at this speed and this, this speed, which is uh, very advantageous for people with anxiousness and depression because they usually have a, a brain speed problem left to right. And then it also has uh, uh, two different types of, of frequency um, of sound that create uh, whatever desired wavelength we're trying. And then it also has uh, audio guidance for some things. Uh, you know, lots of people, you know, if you think of it generally, like people have anxiousness, usually they're apprehensive of something in the future. So there's words you can put, uh, uh, putting future events into perspective and uh, kind of self-talking yourself. And then in depression, as many times as we've had something that happened negative in the past and we can't let it go, we keep ruminating on it. So uh, there's a lot of these things and also goal setting, sports and different different things that can be used in the audio part. And the, Tell and us the about how you worked with a Dr. Patrick Porter on some of the programs or helped to develop this. Yeah, we did. Uh, so one of the things we did early on, uh, we've been using the BrainTap, I think, since 2014, uh, 15. And actually, that's an interesting story, because the reason we got that was uh, my uh, wife was had her mom was, was terminal and was dying. And her favorite poodle, 16-year-old poodle, was fading and she was getting no sleep. She's totally stressed out. Yeah. And we went to this um, seminar. Anyway, she went over there and did this. She goes, I want to go back Sunday. I, I want to look at this thing again. I really felt different. So we took, we did something called heart rate variability, which measures the function of many different functions of the autonomic nervous system. We did a before and after. And we also took this uh, device that measures vascular function. Yeah. And she had a 300% improvement and her vascular function. And she got a huge uh, decrease in her fight flight and a big increase in the rest of the digest. So wow. that was, I was totally convinced and that we started using that um, in the office at, at that time. And, uh, but anyway, when I started doing brain mapping from the brain maps, we would see this imbalance in the left and right hemisphere. So the left hemisphere should be more beta and the right should be a little more alpha. And when that doesn't occur, people get anxious and depressed. So we cre actually created uh, two apps. One's called inhibited for the alpha and, and over arousal for the uh, beta imbalance. And it so the right and the left sides do different frequencies to cross over the brain to balance that. Is that the, that's a program within BrainTap, correct? Yeah, that's a, that's wow. yeah. So those are specific apps we did to correct those two things found in abnormalities found in brain mapping. Now, I had somebody on Instagram actually ask the other day, is this something similar to uh, neurofeedback? Well, uh, no, it's, a, it's called an audio visual trainer. Um, mm -hmm. We're using the information from QEG to 
do the appropriate thing, but it's 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 a different different application than neurofeedback. Okay, and it's actually uh, just training. It's pacing the brain with mm -hmm. light sound versus the neurofeedback. You're getting a visual cue to shift the brain. Got rate. it. Okay, um, so both together. can people purchase these units from you, and you provide the programs? Uh, sure. I mean, we have uh, lots of people come in and. Uh, like we'll do them for their children. They go, can we get one? You know, mom or dad says, can we get one? Yeah, sure. For stress reduction. And oh yeah, now my, now grandma wants one or, and so, yeah, they're, they're a great tool. Um, you know, everybody, we live in a very stressful world, you know, particularly in the last two years, even more so. And everybody needs a way to de-stress their brain. So this is a right. great, this is a great tool to de-stress the brain. So it, it makes your brain, it gives you the effects of meditation without you having to be trained in meditation, which is, right. which is hard for most people. I actually purchased a unit um, for my husband and I actually use it and I tried it. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. It takes you away with the music and the guided, med, um, you know, audio meditation. You know, a lot of people have a tough time meditating, it, 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 you know, even alone right. sitting. I sitting fall asleep high. probably 90% of the time. Um, on on it, and, yeah. and, and but when it does, it brings you back up. You'll wake up at the end of it. But wow, it, it relaxes me so much. Yeah, and and of course, sleep is very important for regenerating the brain. And we have other webinars just on sleep, um, so we'll, we'll get to that. But let's let's move on. This is exciting. Okay, so this is just the message. You know, lots of times parents take you know and and with the best intentions in mind, they take them from specialist to specialist to get the definitive diagnosis. The, the definitive diagnosis doesn't always uh, get you. I would, I would encourage doing some uh, non-drug therapy to see really what to get the best results and, and, and investigate this hemispheric approach because it gets wonderful results. And, you know, I have people all over the country that use this and they are all very busy busy, busy, uh, because they're, they, they help so many people. So, you know, although your centers are in Florida and Kansas city, you know, you do have people flying down and staying for a couple of weeks, correct? Yes. Well, we, I've got, uh, people from Philadelphia, Ohio, Northeast will come and bring their children for a week or two, uh, especially this time of year. Uh, so it's nice in Florida. And uh, we have uh, other people will come in, you know, aging patients we've had come in and uh, for we call them intensive. So we'll do three to four and a half hours a day, uh, mm -hmm. maybe to one to three weeks, you know, after we've done a consultation and we've, we've done uh, some cognitive testing and we, we've done some different things and we have a background on and what we're trying to accomplish. I'm just going to throw this up in here that if you sign up now, you get um you know, for a consultation, you'll get $100 off your initial brain assessment. Tell me what's involved in that assessment package. Um, yeah, it's it's quite a bargain. We, we do a, uh, a con it's about a two hour process. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do an in-depth uh, consultation. Then we do a physical examination. We're checking primitive reflexes, core strength. We're checking uh, cerebellar function, parietal function. Uh, temporal function, frontal cortex, and then we are, we have multiple pieces of equipment that quantitate these dysfunctions and they overlap. So we do the right eye, which is an infrared camera measures eye movements. We do the interactive metro metronome, which checks 14 uh, eye foot coordination uh, synchronies. We do something called balance tracks. We, we look at their, uh, assess the balance in the vestibular system. We check the ear canals. We're able to see, uh, you know, if they're having a vestibular problem. And then we do the brain mapping. Comprehensive, um, you know, yeah. assessment for yeah, sure. Yeah, heart rate variability also. So we do, it's it's very comprehensive. And then the, the person goes and does some extensive questionnaires to give us more insights about their uh, personalities. And then also, um, 
they do cognitive testing so we can quantitate, you know, where are they? Are they below average? Are they way below average? Are they, you know, the average or above? And so our goal is just to take, you know, find the weakest areas and, and, and improve that functionality. We also have a special offer. So um, there's a promo code that you could use Restore Brain for a free uh, book offer. So um, there is a link on the website. For those who sign up, actually, um, you know, we'll put a link in uh, in this uh, show. You click on that uh, and you, you know, put in your name, your email address. We'll email you the promo code, the link uh, again to get this free book offer. Lots of great information in there for those who have attended and watched this live event. Um, yeah, again, I would, mm -hmm. I would uh, you know, in this, this we given the PDF and this PDF, this has actually got an extra chapter on the hemispheric um, balancing the hemispheres, which is okay. not in the original book. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I'm thinking that we have that little code, that QR code we created yeah. for the brain imbalance, that might sure. be a good thing yeah, that'll we'll include a, a quick five-minute. Yeah, a very good explanation for for awesome. brain balance. Right, we'll give that all of that information via email. Um, now, again, you know, we have three centers that they can come and visit you uh, in Kansas City, Missouri, Temple Terrace, Florida, and Naples, Florida. Um, just call, you know, get connected. Info at savingyourbrain.com is uh, the email. Visit the website. Lots of great information about all the different products and services. You also have telehealth medicine. Um, and that's another way for them to, you know, get that telehealth secure consultation with you with before coming in, correct? How yeah, and some, and some patients, just because of multiple different reasons, are not able to get in. So we actually do like a Zoom meeting where we can do a, we have the spouse there and we'll do like a little observational evaluation, then we can get them started on some home therapies. Yeah, you've made it really easy too. We have online forms through tele, you know, tele telehealth, sorry. And, um, you know, they can fill that out and have it all ready for you, uh, for them before they come in. So thank you so much for this. It's um, a wealth of information. Um, you know, this has gone live. We are hoping that you know, you do share this broadcast with your friends and family, loved ones, and give Dr. Kelly Miller a call. Um, he is the brain expert. Now, coming up uh, on March 1st uh, is another webinar, live webinar, and that's talking about mold, mycotoxins, and your brain. Can you guys give me a little bit description of what that uh, live uh, event will be about? Yeah, uh, just to give a little background on that, you know, when I, I wrote Saving Your Brain because I was having problems with my brain. And actually, after I published, it wasn't until after I published that book that I found that I had a chronic mold and uh, inflammation myself, infection inflammation. So uh, since that time, I found it very common in, in the patients that come in, probably uh, three or four or four of the five patients have uh, a mold but we're going to share a, a, a guy named Bill Nicole, who's been in this business for 20 plus years, and he has some unique enzymes that will actually destroy the mycotoxins. And so he has some remediation techniques for homes and things that we're going to uh, talk about. Perfect. Wow, that's exciting. Okay, great. We're looking forward to you know seeing that. Um, so sign up for your emails, uh, our emails. Um, at info at savingyourbrain.com. You'll also get the link below and be able to um, get the book, the free offer, get a, you know, we'll go live again on March 1st at 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. So do connect with us. You'll learn everything you need to know about uh, protecting your brain. And so thank you very much again. You have, everybody have a nice day. Thank you, Dr. Kelly Miller for joining us and uh, hope to see everyone on March 1st. Take care. Thank you, Bye-bye.